In this vault, you see mountains and mountains of gold. We're in a castle of mimics, and mimics are famously known to take the form of treasure chests. I'm gonna use conjure animals. Okay. Uh, two uh, brown bears wearing backwards caps and sunglasses. They, they like skateboard out, yeah. and they're both just like, yo, what's up? I'm Rip and I'm dead. You're looking at this beautiful ornate chest and all of a sudden the pearlescent sides crumble in and start to slide in with the rest of this gold and out of this bursts um, this giant mouth with huge fangorious teeth. You hear something in the distance, a jangling in rhythm. And it's Gunthar yeah. and he's wheeling around in front of you toward the horde mimic and says, I'm afraid that update's gonna have to wait. I can't let you do this. Welcome back to the final episode of Sword AF Delivering Destiny. When we last left our heroes, they were about to destroy the Mimic Horde that was functioning as the heart of a living Mimic castle, leveling everything beneath it. Right as they were about to strike the final few blows on this Mimic, hoofbeats could be heard and Gunthar, their centaur, guide, and moral compass throughout the season, wheeled his way in front of them, pointing his glaive at them, sending them into shock. And let's see what happens. As you are all getting ready to destroy this mimic horde, it looks like it's on its last legs. Gunthar, your centaur friend, wheels his way in front of you, looks at the mimic horde, and looks back at you. You said you had a long update for him, and he said, that update's gonna have to wait. I can't let you continue and he holds up his glaive directly at you. Why? Why are you doing this? Why? You guys have forgotten your mission time and time again. I've let you play hero when you need to, and trust me, I get it. I miss doing that too. But your job was to deliver something to this castle. I get that you got a side contract, that's great. But look at this vault. Take whatever you want. You don't have to kill this thing yet. That's a separate job. That's two jobs. Get paid for this too. Let someone else hire you. You have a position you're employed for. But everyone in the castle is at risk. And or whatever this is, a tongue house. I'm not happy about it either. Uh, but we have roles to play. This isn't the age of heroes anymore. But how are we gonna take this money out of this place? There's tongues at the bottom. Do I got a wagon? We got magic? Anything you want but you don't need to do the extra steps yet. You have a job. Mission three is waiting for you. Can I see if he's deceiving us? Go for it, yeah, um, roll perception. 15, 15 plus. plus two, 17. Um, 17, so you can tell that um, Gunthar is not lying to you at all. He is, however, displeased with what he's saying. Okay. So he's like, listen, we all have jobs we have to do. We have to maintain these positions, be employed. It's the oh. way the world works now. So Fernie in full bear form is like, so you don't care if all these people die? Of course I care, but people die every day. You think I didn't see death in the Age of Heroes? I was a mercenary like you during the hard times, whether it was monsters or villages or, or anything, a, a war that I'm a part of. It's all part of this machine. You understand that, right? No, no, we don't understand that. I, 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 for one, am not a machine, right? And just because it's okay, just because it does happen, doesn't mean we have to let it happen if we have the power to stop it. I know it's been a, a little while since we've seen you last, and we were pretty devoted to like being good mercenaries. But since then, we've realized there's a lot of, there's, there's a lack of heart in being a mercenary. We found that it's just kind of like, one thing to the next. In and, and out. And I think we just uh, wanted to see if there was more to life and we kind of liked being heroes. I mean, we aren't really heroes. We're like half heroes. I don't know what you'd call it. You're, you're sort of heroes. Yeah. Guys, don't do this. Don't tell me you're quitting this. Please, I, I don't want this any more than you, but this is not a safe choice to make. We're just changing our story. We, we we can't leave this place after all these people are in despair. It's not right, Gunthar. Just to have a good job and make 20 gold coins 
Fernie changes back into a robot. He turns to Rip and Dip, and he's like, "All right, you guys just hang out back there." And they're like, "All right, yeah, for sure." And they like, uh, they're like starting to smoke a spiritual bong. Um, and then <laughs> he walks up, and he's just like, "Look, we, frankly, we were sucking at being delivery mercenary people, but oh, yeah. as heroes, we kind of kick butt, and we kind of we got a cohesive thing yeah. going. You know, wouldn't it make sense to do what we're good at? Yeah, we're sort of really." good at it. Yeah, beating the shit out of that thing. Yeah, I can see that, and that's great, but look at what's happened outside. I'll, I'll, I'm like, what, what's outside? I look over at the window, I walk over the window and look out. So you can see that these, um, these tongues have uh, left these huge, giant, like, plots of just dirt and rubble in their path everywhere they've stepped, and as you peek out the window a little bit more, you can see that this path stretches all the way from the Sinmarl Woods to where you started, Seraphel. So this is an entire countryside that's been stomped out. Like, look, you may have you may have done some good, but look at the look at the rubble too. Look at this collateral damage. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Being a hero isn't easy. It isn't a job title. That's why I want you to stay mercenaries, because then you know your role, you stick to it, and not as many people get hurt. So you want us to let the monster keep destroying the countryside. I want you to leave the opportunity for professionals of this caliber to be hired to take down something like this. We're too far in, man. Bug hears that about professionals and suddenly Bug's, Bug's really good posture in the last two hours goes really low. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bug. I didn't want to say it. But we gotta be honest. You're growing. You're growing so much and I love watching you grow, but you're not there yet. You're not there yet, you're a kid. You all are. Oh, okay. In your own way. Thank you. Some less than, far less than others. Oh, can I walk to the corner and call Kelwick, Kelwick for guidance? Yeah. Cause I'm genuinely confused. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, Bug is just literally lost because honestly, Bug had s found so much meaning in the last day mm, mm -hmm. and found so much direction with his friends and his newfound confidence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and his newfound abilities. And he looks up and he goes, Kiltwick, if there is a right answer here, Gunthar shows really good points in his argument. Show me and my friends if there is a right answer. You channel this divinity in your mind and you go almost meditative. And while you're not at a point in your devotion yet where you can see Kelwick necessarily, you do hear a bit of a voice in your heart in the form of an idea. This idea is that just because someone is more experienced than you doesn't mean they are more correct. And that if you can be convinced, so can someone else. I have a question. Sure. I look back from the window, I'm like, okay. So you're saying that all of this, the important thing is money. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so, uh, you know, we've been doing all this stuff for money and I, you know, we've gotten some money and that's cool. I still haven't figured out, and I'm asking genuinely, because I'm very confused. What does money do? <laughs> it bought me this purse. Because if we can't kill this thing because of money, then I, money must be pretty important. So what, what, Gunthar, what do you use money for? Money makes this world turn. Not the one I was raised in, mind you. That was a time where your name could get you whatever you needed. Your actions could get you whatever you needed. But it's not that way anymore. I mean, my God, we're a delivery service. But what if we were more? Bug walks back and joins the group. I mean, here's the thing, guys. I'm the same Gunthar you knew. I agree with you. And I want to return to the Age of Heroes our way. But it can't just be us five. It can't be. There's no way. It's not enough. We're talking about a whole world that's changed in the time that we've been doing what we do. But you can. It has to start somewhere. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's all I'm always saying time. that. I, I don't want to eat, uh, eat an elephant. It's a figure, how do you start a journey? One step at a time. Eat a bite of an elephant. I do like that, yeah. What would that even look like for us? Well, we one of us would start chewing at the feet. Not the elephant, no, Fernie. Fernie. Oh, what would it look like for us to change everything? I mean, 
Well, we'd start by beating the shit out of that thing. Yeah, what yes, is this mimic doing We were right so now? close to I was, it. Rip and Dip over there were doing some damage. Yeah. It's like, Gunther, you haven't even met Rip and Dip. They're good Or people. Ruben, for that matter. I don't understand what you get from coming here at the at just right when we started getting our footing. Purpose. Another purpose. I saw my profession go away in front of me. I saw the world change without me in it. I get a purpose again. By telling us what to do? By, yeah. Oh. Middle management. I've been there. We don't want to go down this road. Trust me. I want y'all each to give me one more final persuasion roll. All right. 19 plus... Um, minus one, so 18. 18. Wait, can I cast Guidance? Yes. Okay, I cast Guidance on it. Okay. <gasps> uh, that is a four. Yes. Four, okay, so it's a 22. Um, so Gunthar looks at you and you can see that there's um, some shame in his face, um, that he sort of let these ideas come out of him because he does not believe them at all. Mm. And he looks at you and he looks to rip and dip and he's like, I could never disappoint you too. Them? Okay, what about, says, hi. If I'm not living as my authentic self, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sorry for pointing my glaive at you. And he throws his spear onto the ground and he goes, what do you say? We all quit. I took a second and prayed to my God and I had a, I had a feeling you'd switch over. Oh, all right, cool. Yes. Um, so Gunthar pulls out a scroll, reads something off of it, and on the ground appears a portal. Out of this portal, um, hops, who you haven't seen in nine episodes, Krungdar. Krungdar the orc of uh, your handler, the one who oh, gathered yeah. you all in that pub all those, all those week ago. And he pops up, he goes, hey, what's, uh, what's going on here? Gunthar, you're supposed to, Summon me for emergencies, big guy. What's uh, what's going on? Hey, you four. Looks like some uh, damage has been done here to the uh, heart of this mimic castle. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, so I don't really know how to give an official two weeks notice, but. Oh, I'm quitting right now. <laughs> yeah, we're all um, quitting. Quit. We quit and you can take Nothing, because you didn't give us uniforms in the first place, so. We, we quit. quit. But I am still gonna beat the shit out of that thing in a second. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, me uh, three. Interesting. So you guys actually got a, a lot further than I thought. So you unleashed the Mimic Castle, which means you beat the witch, the hag that was here. That's great. Um, you knew about the yeah, hag? you knew. Oh, buddy. <gasps> Come we were on. were set up. Listen, you unleashed a turtle dragon into the world, you unleashed a mimic castle into the world. You guys don't miss the Age of Heroes at all? Listen, without problems, there's no cycle to anything. <gasps> Gunthar knows this too, and he taps on Gunthar, and Gunthar sort of looks down, and you can tell he's very much like defeated, like someone stronger than him is next to him telling him what to do, and he can't really look him in the eye. And Krungdar looks at you and says, <laughs> now y'all are gonna make the choice you wanna make, but I wanna, I want to say my piece first. You all wanted to be heroes, right? Growing up, reading those stories. Why? For what? You hear about the age of heroes, I think we were all out slaying dragons. Some of us were. What do you think, all dragons are evil? You think some of them are even old enough to make mistakes? It was a messy, messy job. And you think, You'd win glory in wars. We're talking wars here. If someone wants a village gone, they point to it and it's our job to get rid of it. The Age of Heroes was messy and bloody. And some of us lived and died by it. That was the economy. There was a need and you would show up to fix it. So people respected you and you got what you needed out of it. This whole world is built on that and I gave you that. I gave you jobs in a time where there is otherwise none. I gave you a purpose. I gave this guy purpose. He points at Gunthar and Gunthar again looks really sad and he's like, look, they're, they're losers and winners. They're strong and there's weak. But disparity drives movement. If you didn't feel weak, you wouldn't have grown. 
Look at you, you're not the same person I sent out a couple weeks ago, but you're a cleric. You pray to your gods, right? If there were no problems, you think the people would pray to the gods? Any purpose for the gods? Why don't gods solve all the problems? Because then you wouldn't pray. And you, you're a little wooden mechanical man built for destruction. That's your whole point. You're gonna rebel against that now? And I got your whole file, Kota Amakir. Amakir of the Ever Summer Sands. Your whole life was planned out for you in a position of power. And you left it. You left it, why? Because there's more out here when there's conflict, and you know that. And Dolores, Dolores, you made a deal. I know all about it. Shut up. You made a deal, and that's trade. You gave something, you got something, and there was a middleman. That's economics if I've ever heard it. So you can only be called a hero by those left alive, and you better pray that those who survive are glad that you survived too. Now hearing all that, and seeing everything I gave to you, you still want to quit? Is the portal still open? Um, it is. I want to push him. You want to push him? All right. I um, him love that. Go ahead and roll athletics for me. 17. Krungdar has a plus 10 to athletics, so that was nine plus 10. So you rush up and you put both your hands on him with as hard as, hard as you can, and there's just this gentle clink. And he looks at you and he goes, ah, Coda, that's a non-verbal answer, but I like you. You take action. That's great. <laughs> it's cute is what it is. But the problem is, I need a villain. I need a villain to come out of all this, right? We need more conflict. I mean, this thing has already leveled villages as it's walked over this whole, you know, countryside. And I need more of that. Someone's gonna hire me to stop that. Someone's gonna hire me to fix all this stuff. So what are you gonna do? Find me another villain? I don't think so. I'm sorry, you guys. But you guys are gonna see a side of me that you might not like. Uh, the side of you that did aerial in that pool, <laughs> I didn't like, so. Ah! Yes. See this amulet that I've been wearing? There's a dark side. I have a deal. Oh. Oh. Don't look for too long. It actually really hurts your eyes. Okay. I've been protecting you all, and I am done. Done! Using illusions. I'm gonna throw my fucking fireball. I want Dolores to take away her illusion. Mm -hmm effect over over this fireball, and I want her to shoot this fireball directly towards Krondar. Towards Krondar? Yep. Okay, got it. Okay. I hurl my fireball straight in front of me. It is the colors of orange and red and yellow, and it burns. Everyone can feel the heat. I can feel the heat. And I push it away from my body right in front of me. Go ahead and roll to hit with that fireball. Seven. Coda, you're also gonna wanna roll. Okay. 18 plus two, so that's 20. 17. 17, okay, you dodge it as well. Krungdar sees that and just takes a step back and is like, whoa, <laughs> spicy, which you missed. It wasn't meant for you. <gasps> okay, um, mimic, mimic horde. Okay, so <laughs> this horde mimic is the only thing that gets hit by your fireball. Oh. Uh, Dolores, go ahead and roll. <laughs> 8d6. You know what would be fun? Jeez. Everybody hand oh Dolores god. your d6s. Oh my god. Give me all your d's. I'm using the power of everyone here and everyone who is not here. Huh? That's everyone. Tungo. <laughs> Especially Tungo. Okay. Um, oh. That's an 8, 12, 14, um, Okay, so um, the Mimic Horde gets hit with this fireball. Yes. And wretches angrily, and you see this tendril just sort of recede back into its mouth as it closes up and burns and shakes and comes to a stop. <laughs> you did it. So Krungdar looks at that and goes, well, that was, that was real clever, Dolores. Oh no. You're the type of person that I would have promoted. I mean, you come back and visit Seraphel any time. <laughs> Y'all did great. I would have definitely put you up more for higher pay, better hours, anything. You deserve it, you really do. But like I said, for this economy to work, I needed a villain. Damn. And so he walks on over to the window and looks forward, looks up a little bit, pulls out another scroll himself, puts his hand on the wall, 
and you can see outside the window there's a blue light. And he walks on over to Gunfar and he says, well, at least I got four of them. And Krungdar grabs Gunfar by the head and suplexes him down into the portal, <gasps> out the window, <gasps> portal, hundreds of feet to the ground. <gasps> what? And Krungdar is standing there looking at you like, damn, I really wish it had just been the castle. Well, it's incredible to me that four mercenaries went rogue and killed their driver. What a shame. <gasps> You are a monster. You're not gonna get away with you this. You are a monster. You're the villain. Mm. I Thanks. beg yeah. to differ. Sick. And he, he looks at you and goes like, think about everything I said. Think about the state of the world. And you tell me if a couple of cracked eggs ain't worth an omelet. And he jumps back down into this portal, out the window, starts sliding down one of the tongues off into the distance. <gasps> portal closes behind him. And as you are left in this moment with the dead mimic and the memory of your dead friend, the castle begins to rumble again and settle. And you hear this horrifying scream in the distance, louder than it should ever be, as everything settles to a rest. And so you're left in this vault with all of this money, but the memory of what you just saw. Fernie picks up some gold coins I still really don't know what this does. <laughs> <laughs> After all this, I still don't know what this does. This is me. Is this the villain? Honestly. 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 Yeah. yeah. Do we punch it? No. no. Damn. I mean, I could. You should probably we, could. That I'm was feeling really, really hey, good hey, right now. Hey, you guys, would it make you feel better? Let's do it. Let's punch some gold. Okay, so all of you roll to hit um, unarmed strikes on this gold. All right. Oh, should we take all this off? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I need mine. Uh, I roll a 10. Okay, great. I wanna slice some gold up. I'm slicing it. Okay, so you're slicing some gold up. Roll to hit. <laughs> I swear to God, Chance. It's 12, 12, three. 12 plus three. Coda and Dolores, you are too full of rage to properly hit this money. Swing you're still, do, you're just wildly swinging blindly, but you two need so much focus right now to get rid of the thought of Gunthar falling from hundreds of feet to the ground below that you're just making these perfect precision strikes on gold. And it may hurt your knuckles a bit, but it doesn't hurt as bad as your heart. I'm going, making perfect punches, which I've never done in my life. Yeah. <laughs> going, he helped you find your purpose, bug. You had a perfect arc. You figured out who you were. Perfect arc. Ah! You had a perfect arc, and you, and it helped you find out who you were. Fernie lifts up a fist right in front of a gold coin. He's just like, I thought I finally had a purpose, and then it just starts like, <laughs> <laughs> like just like a jackhammer. Nice, nice. You guys find yourselves, um, you know, whether blinded by rage and missing the money or doing these precision strikes, um, losing yourself for a little bit. You don't know if it's five minutes. You don't know if it's an hour, but you're sort of in this state until you hear something outside. Again, you're now on the ground and there are these barred windows next to the vault and you start to see some light flickering from outside. Um, who's going up to the window? I'll go. Coda goes. So Coda, you go up to the window and sort of stick your face in between the bars there. And outside, you can see a horde of people of all different sizes and shapes, all different races and classes, looking at this castle, which is plopped down in the middle of this area that they've never seen before. And you can see on their face, there's a mixture of anger and confusion and fear. Some of them have pitchforks, some of them have torches. Others are mat you know, readying spells, but they have taken you as a threat. Oh no. And they're about to try to make their way in. One of them throws a stone and it hits directly next to your face, Coda. And another one looks you right in the eyes and goes, you, you, and gets a good look at your face. Not us, not us. It's drowned out by oh, the yells. Shit. Can Dolores come over to you and ask you to pick her up? Yeah. Coda, can you pick me up? I need to see what's going on here. Yep. Oh no, it's a witch hunt. Quite a little bit too late, unfortunately. So 
You can tell um, that this is surrounding the castle on all sides and they're starting to try to dig their things into it and maybe even climb up. Okay. What do you do to escape? Um, you guys, okay. So there's a horde outside. Um, we need to get out of here. Okay, so we're just gonna leave the castle? Okay, so usually, Usually we're not leaving the gold. We we're so not leaving money. the gold. Usually, and usually when we need stuff, we put it all in in Dolores's bag. But with Dolores's bag is just too big for the, all this money. No, it's too small. It's too small I, for all I, this I hate the money. It's, it's the villain, but I think we also need it. We I need, need we, it. We need it. We did all this for nothing, and then Gunthor dies for nothing. You know yeah, yeah. what I mean? Okay, what else is in the vault? Everything in the vault. Everything in the bug. I need you to keep it together. Yes, you got it. Does that does that feel like keeping it together to you? No. Okay, so fix it. Uh huh. Good. Uh, that was good. Yeah. That was really good, bud. You're good too. Okay, thank you. Look, I, I'm not powerful enough of a druid to fly yet, but I could try. And we might, might die. Oh. But I could try. What? I don't know. I could turn into something. And There's I could fly. too what much if, in this vault. There's too much gold. What if we put half the gold in your bag, half of it in my sack? Half? Look at all the fucking gold. I can Bug, carry a lot of if gold. If Coda has 10 pounds of gold <laughs> and Bug has five pounds of gold, and we're moving and at I have, five and we're miles moving an hour. at 50 miles yeah. per hour <laughs> by some miracle. Is there like a tunnel in this place that we can get out? No, it's a castle that was just floating. Can we mail the gold? Oh yeah. To where? The postal service, maybe they don't know that we're being hunted. Okay, you guys, everything in the vault is ours. There's a lot in the vault. Let's spread out, look around, find something maybe magical or something. Okay. Be a magic carpet. A big carpet. <sighs> I'm rolling for investigation perception around. Right. right. Thing. Is everybody else? Anyone that? else want to look with me? Yes. Oh, Fifteen plus, oh, plus five. Plus five. Okay, so that's actually enough. Um, so okay. Koda, all you see around here right now is um, piles of gold, and while there are some beautiful ornate weapons, there's nothing necessarily magical. All you can really see outside of gold, the barred windows, and the door that you came through is this dead mimic heart. There's nothing in the thing except for the dead mimic cart. Damn it. There's some weapons, but all we're working with is this core. We gotta do something. There's gold, which is evil, and then there's this dead mimic heart, which, which is, is just also there. evil. Okay, well, so it was do you, evil, now I don't know. So if the house has a heart mm -hmm. and the heart is dead, does that make the house dead? Yes. Yes. Because the house used to be alive, because it had tongues. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. Okay, because I have animate the dead. Yes. Okay, so I, so, and the and the money is in the house, and we can't take the money, but we could take the house, we take and the we can house. move, and we can travel. Because then I can use the spell, and we could just take the house. And we can take the house. And we can take the house, I'll take the house. Okay, so. <laughs> no, exes? I'll take the house. Oh, I'll take oh, the I'm house from the my house. ex. Yeah. Oh, I'll always take the house. So, Bug, um, generally that spell would be used on something smaller, like a person, but you are so inspired from the situation and the memory of Gunthar that I think if everybody comes to you and helps channel their own magic power and everybody else rolls a d20 as well, yeah. I'm gonna let you attempt And this. what about if I if I cast Beacon of Hope, this spell bestows hope and vitality? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can. And guidance? And, and I can, I can anything? use, yeah, I can use enhance ability. So you use enhance ability, you use guidance. Okay, 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 okay. Um, uh, it has advantage. Great, oh, advantage, great. Um, so Bug, roll a d20 for me. <sighs> okay. This whole time, I've been playing with crossbows. Meanwhile, I can animate right. the dead. Right, yeah, I know, we really, we really were. We're also in episode nine. Hell yeah. I've been sticking crossbows through my freaking flip flops. Scandal. Meanwhile, I can make a house move. <laughs> That is a actual natural 20 for you doing this, Buck. Everybody else roll your d20s too. Add in your power. That was f***ing crazy, don't do it on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 20, 20! What the f***? That's crazy. 11! 11. Yeah! Seven. Uh, well, okay. That's okay. Two nat 20s. So y'all had two natural 20s. So channeling your powers together. Um, Bug, you dig deep and you've never felt so connected to the deity through which you've pledged your devotion. So you feel Kelwick's power for the first time. You know that this power is coming from both Kelwick and yourself. And you are bringing this heart back to life. But it is no longer this wild monstrosity that it used to be. It is under your control. And while you can't necessarily maintain this for too long, you are able to move this castle. Does anyone want to act as a lookout with like unseen servant uh, can or? I, uh, can I also just say something kind of cool really quick? Yeah. Um, so uh, Fernie's there, he's got his hand on your shoulder and he's just like, you know, I, I, I can really sense everyone's belief, but I just want to say, I, I believe in you. I definitely believe in you, but I can sense that Coda believes in you the most. And I think that's pretty cool. 
Because he didn't shit. believe in you before, and I could feel that. Oh, he definitely did not believe in you. <laughs> but in this I moment, in this moment, too. they absolutely believe in you. I could feel it too. Meanwhile, I'm holding a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say real quick while you're doing that. <laughs> Gina, Gina, uh, Bug needs a little bit of help. I'm calling my Gina, auntie. Gina, Gina, Gina. Sorry, I'm calling her out. Gina's like looking out the window and like keeping an eye out, and we'll just constantly be like. Good job, Gina. She's great with parallel parking. Rip and Dip are both having horrible trips. I mean, yeah. They're both just like, what's happening, <laughs> man? <laughs> I'll cast Minor Illusion and I'll amplify to a shout and be like, move out of the way. Villagers, move out of the way. Stop me getting literally emotional right now. This is great. No, this is good content. All right, so your castle moves north along the shoreline until you find yourselves um, atop a cliffside overlooking this beach area. And the castle takes two of its tendrils, moves itself up, and then situates on top as you are um, slowly running out of energy. And it settles down into place. And you can tell after a little bit of time, you're no longer being pursued. You didn't take any other lives while you were dealing with that situation heading north from Seraphel. And although you can see Seraphel in the distance and you know Krungdar is there, Right now, you know that you are safe. <sighs> wow. Wow. So, mead? Yeah, <sighs> can we please? Mm -hmm. um, as you say that, Gaspard enters in with a food cart. <gasps> and uh, he says, I know you must have done it. We felt so many crazy things in the past couple of hours. I mean, I know you probably had a crazy day, but like, when you have time, when you have time, this was wild for us too. Um, everything is like more or less back to normal in the castle and everyone is also back to normal. The prince has never been livelier. Yeah. But I, I wish to tell you something. Um, you know, we could overhear you from the level above um, talking about how the Heart of the castle was in the vault, and um, you are correct. A contract is a contract. So <gasps> I must say, this castle is yours. <gasps> uh, I do have one thing to ask, though. Uh, you see, all of us have been trapped here for 500 years, maybe more, maybe less. We don't know. <laughs> we don't have, uh, I guess, a place to go. Uh, you're going to need people in this castle to make things lively, you know. If we could continue on our society here and perhaps also make sure that there's enough food for you, and uh, could we perhaps? Gaspard, stay of here? course. We would never take you from your home. Oh, thank you very much. You are truly the saviors of this place. You're. You're sort of heroes, if I were to be honest with you. Gaspard, uh, we'd love to introduce you to our friend Kevin. Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out, Kevin. Kev? Uh, hey, Kev man. Where was Kevin being stored? <laughs> Kevin's always like in his head, I feel like. <laughs> Kevin crawls out of his head and he's like, yeah, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Kevin, this is your new home now. Meet Gus Bar. Oh, you wait. I'm s sorry, I'm just going to pump the brakes real fast. Or do you want the moth to live in my body or do is it the world? Like it's just the, the castle? world. Yeah, just oh. the castle. Kevin's oh. a little shy, so I thought I'd I introduce him. To be fair, I think I found Kevin in this castle. Yeah, I was in this castle. Oh yeah, whoops. whoops. Yeah, it's, it's okay, we, we but, but it's fine. It's all, you know what? I, actually, I wanted to do something too. Uh, sorry, it's me, Kevin. I just uh, I want to introduce you to your three new best friends. See how that feels? Um. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Kevin. Touche. <laughs> Uh, okay, wow. So Kevin goes back into Fernie's brain. Okay, yeah, no. sorry, he's been I influencing am, me every day. I'm so <laughs> glad he does not live in my brain. Oh yeah. So Gaspard looks at you as you're you know, stuffing your faces, maybe drinking some mead, having some food, healing yourselves back up. Oh. He's actually, uh, to Fernie, he's sort of like looking at the some of the wood paneling on your leg that's uh, a little bit you know, chucked up and he's sort of like repairing it with like a hammer and maybe sanding it oh. down. And he's like, so um, you know, once obviously you've had some rest, uh, what? Uh, What's next for you? Any plans for the castle? Uh, well, well. Krondike, what's his name? Krondike? What? Kron, what's his Krondike? Name? Krondike? Krondike Bar? Dog, I haven't met him, I don't what's know. What's his name? Krondar. Krondar. Krondar came here trying to make four villains, but I think he ended up making four heroes. <gasps> okay, that warmed my heart. Yeah, big words coming from you, Coda. Yeah. Guys. Are we gonna stick together? Of course. Well, we are wanted by 
everyone is in the whole world as far as we know. They okay. think we're villains, All but right. we know we're heroes. Yeah. And everyone yeah. in this castle knows we're heroes. Cool. Yeah. We yeah, are right. heroes. Really. I mean, everything's different about us. Yeah. That's not just a crossbow anymore. That's a crossbow of heroes. Yes! This is my hammer of heroes! Yeah. This this is my big bag of heroes. I love that. This yes. this um the, uh yeah. this is you got it. um ooh, come on the, the hands of heroes. Perfect! Yes! This right here, sword of heroes. Yes! We're the sword of heroes. L like we are, yeah. The heroes are use uh, like they they would be like oh I'm gonna use them yeah, yeah like we're the sword of heroes oh I love that yeah that's our name oh I like that right you, you guys you guys are sword of heroes that works yeah the everybody sword of has heroes. been saying that this entire yeah, you're, time you're sword so of yeah. everybody knew that yeah like swords yeah you're yeah so, you're sword of heroes yeah. all right we're sword of heroes look at you go look at you go look at you go I have another cool thought okay. Okay, so we know the name of our our group. Um, I was also thinking we have this castle. What if we called it the Gunthar? I love that. That's the this castle because it's also like a moving castle. So it's like it's like a, also a ship. So it's like the Gunthar. A little pretty sick, right? Because he can't die in vain. Like he he's my motivation to yeah. beat the crap out of Krungdar. Yeah. Bug looks up and is. Full of water. <laughs> I think it's a really good idea, Fernie. I don't know if you know what this is, but these are tears. Because I'm touched. Some sap like rolls out of his <laughs> oh. eye, eye hole. You've had uh, that forever? That's really good in a mixed drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Gaspard is looking at all this as he's like hanging up a banner that says like, welcome new owners of San Sabur, and just goes like. <laughs> <laughs> and so the four of you head to bed in your new home of Castle Gunfar, which is a very cool idea. Dolores in her room specifically with the moon window, if it's uh. empty on the left, it's waxing. Hello. We all learn that together. Thank you. Everybody else tucking in. Fernie, doo 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 doo. Bug, snoring, mouth wide open. <laughs> and Coda, meditating in trance. Knowing that this is the start of the new normal for yourselves. Later, you will take down Krungdar. You will clear your names. You will accomplish your individual goals. But tonight, you get to sleep well knowing that for the first time, really for the first time, you're heroes. And it wasn't in vain. Sort of. Can Dolores yell out? I love us. <laughs> oh. <It's> silence. Oh, <laughs> shit. Rip, Rip walks out from out of nowhere. He's just eating cereal. He's just like, what? <laughs> and this has been Sword AF Delivering Destiny, season one. Thank you all so much for joining us and trusting us with this story that we care so much about. And I just want to give a huge congratulations to the crew and all of the cast members who've worked so hard, learned so much, and built these amazing characters. Uh, one more time, do you all want to go around the table and say who you are in your character? I'm Shane, and I play Fernie. Angela Bug. Amanda, Dolores, Paradise. Chance, Coda. Thanks so much, y'all. We'll see you very soon. Bye. A little bit of time passes, and they settle into life as the leaders of this new society in Castle Gunthar, on a cliff atop the beach. They take on small jobs here and there, building things up as they go, while also staying a little bit incognito, protecting themselves. People who work in the castle are excited to return to normalcy, see everything that's changed in 500 years, and you get to learn along with them, building and growing together, sharing all that you have, and finding general happiness. And in this time where the castle is taken care of, you get to explore some individual things, taking some time for yourselves before you settle into this huge responsibility. We see 
Fernie, walking into what was once a beautiful forest glade. But you can see there are some signs of deforestation and burning. He walks to the center of this, breathes in a deep sigh, takes out of his pocket a single seed and a flagon of moon water. He plants it in the ground, gives it a pat, pours the moon water on it, and looks around, excited for what it will look like soon. Over his shoulder, the spirits of several animals come and look on, nodding along. Coda is sitting in a bar in a small town on the outskirts of Seraphel, just safe enough, looking into his mead, daydreaming of the life that he once had and everything that he could. The bartender comes up, plops a drink in front of him, and says, it's from someone at the end of the bar. Coda waves it along, not interested in anyone's advances. Bartender walks away for a little while. He comes back and says, they're really insistent that you're gonna want this. He points to the end of the bar, and we see a hooded figure dressed in the colors of spring. Dolores is back at her old homestead, in black and white, the fire burning. She feels a sense of duty, doing what she must to protect those she loves. She opens up her bag and takes out a few little chunks of tongue and teeth and hands them to Morisell. He opens them out of a package with the glee of a child on Christmas morning. And he looks in her eyes with true gratitude. Finally, Bug returns to their village, walking into a sand and stone town built into the cliff sides. He takes off his backpack, wipes his forehead after the long journey, and sees several people building away at a stone structure. One by one, they look up and they take off their hats and they hold it to their chest and they tear up until finally one can collect himself and say, Bug is back. And all of a sudden, dozens of heads pop out of these stone spaces in these buildings and begin cheering and rushing toward Bug and lifting him up, cheering Bug, 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 for they finally again can see the hero of their village. And that is it for Sword AF season one. We can't wait to share what's uh, coming up next. Thank wow. you. Wow. This guy. Wow. From the bottom of my heart and from everybody here at Smosh Games, thank you so much for your support on season one of Sword AF. It has absolutely blown us away. Um, we're so proud of what we were able to make together and we're really excited that you guys seem to like it too, uh, via support on social media, via all the fan art that y'all made. Um, so given that, I'm extremely proud to announce that we've already been approved for Sword AF Season 2. We've got some incredible things planned. Your favorite characters are coming back. We've got some even additional things planned for you that I don't want to spoil yet. And in the coming weeks, we're going to have a roundtable discussion similar to how we had for Board AF Legacy, where we're going to be discussing character development, some of our favorite moments. It's going to be a great time. So thank you so much for everything. Uh, we appreciate your support, and we hope to earn that again in Season 2 coming soon.